this is what it is. It's like we're just having casual conversations and and you would be amazed at how much comes out of having a conversation with fellow brothers and sisters that could help everyone. Yeah. And not just fellow brothers and sisters, but anybody that we run into on the street. Because people have questions and 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 and, and they want answers. You know, he wouldn't have called if he didn't want some sort of answer. Right. right. And and what's important is the answer that we give them that always points them back to the word of God, which always points them to surrender, like what you said, Ken. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's ultimately that's it. what it is. That is true. Dude, that's, that's true. That's true, because if we didn't feed into it, yeah. that we start to think with more rational thought process, then we couldn't be lied to that. Yeah. The problem is, is we're not, we, we can't, what did you say, rational? Thinking? Rationalize, yeah. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't rationalize. We, because we don't, we don't, we don't feed on things that are positive, things that would help us. We feed on negativity. That's for sales. <clears throat> yeah, we feed on it. Yeah. You know, everything we look at, like the media or the magazines or whatever, everything is just negative instead of feeding on things that are positive, like. Yeah. And that hadn't changed for thousands of years. Yeah. Rome, remember they had the, uh, the arenas? Yeah. And they were packed. Yeah. Because people yeah. love blood and guts. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. But but it's sports. It's anything other than the word of God. And that's when we kinda go back. Yeah. We kinda go back to like 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 uh, Andre and I we'll be talking the other day. So, you know, it's funny how he and I we talk, you don't, you don't never hear us talking about sports. <laughs> like you don't you don't hear us we yeah. all we always we talk about something we talk about and then something goes it goes right back to the Bible every time. That's our conversation. It's always Every decision, it seems like every decision that we, we discuss is taken right back to the Bible. Yeah. It's going back to the Bible. And you would think, it was like, okay, if everyone else talked like that, think about how the, the rationale would be. Within the body? No, I'm just talking about in the world. Oh, in the world, yeah. The that world. would be... If everybody was going to that, just like the media comes up, boom, now, okay, how does that relate to... Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that right there, it feeds you. It comes, it gives you that peace, that, that inner peace that everyone is looking for. Yeah. That's what the Bible gives you. And it's like, and the, and the less that we read, the more anxious we are. Yes. And we don't realize it. That's where depression and, and anxiety and all this stuff comes out. It, it comes out of that because peace is right here. Right. And that's what Christ says, I will give you. I will give you that peace. He, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you life. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going right. to give you all that stuff that you desire. But you refuse to come to me. I was thinking it would be great if the whole world was like that. But at the same time, even in the Bible, says it's not meant for everybody. <laughs> so not meant for the majority. It's, like, it's, it's, it's a wonderful dream. It's like when I was younger, it was a, it's a, it was a wonderful mission. Yeah, we're going to save everybody in the yeah. world. That <laughs> clearly goes against what this is. Because everybody ain't going to be saved. Right. <laughs> not all will be saved. But it is a great hypothetical. Yeah. yeah but, that's, but that's where the peace is going to be found. Though. Yeah. Right, that's, that doesn't that's change the regardless. Of, it's, yep. Yeah, there's peace in here regardless. But yep. Not everybody wants it. Yep. It's evident. Yep. We've sat down and studied the Bible with many people. Mm -hmm. And you, you tell them in your show. Yep. And then you say, you have some peace too. And they're like, nah, I ain't reading that. That's <laughs> 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 within the church. Yes, and they don't say it, but actions. <laughs> yep. yep. That's even within the church. Yeah. Yep. Because I've talked to several, several people within the church where... And I'm like, dude, are you reading? <laughs> and I mean, and, and some of them have been anxious. And, and it's like, dude, you're not, you're not reading. No. You can't be. Cause you're, like, I feel personally, and I was talking to this uh, uh, this Jewish gentleman that uh, Jordan and I was selling a wheelchair to, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and he had gone to school to be a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi. Mm -hmm. So he knew the scriptures. Like, these guys don't like start studying the scriptures like yesterday. I know. Like for many yeah. rabbis, they literally just start at the age of five. Right. right. And uh, and he and I were talking, and I and, and he said something. I was like, well, you know, the way that I see it is that when it comes to intellect and God, it's like you you can't supersede God's wisdom. It doesn't matter how many books you read, but the wisdom that you get from God will intellectually make you sound. Yeah. And and, and he looked at me. He's like, yeah. I said. Well, think about this. God is talking to the Israelites in the book of Isaiah. He said, come, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you do <laughs> read the Bible. And he, he, and he opened his 500-year-old uh, Torah. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, what are you 
touch that. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, because it's right here. He's like, oh my goodness. I was like, yeah. I was like, so when you look at that, it's like God is, is, is showing us a different way to think. And what he says, it's going to be rational. Like, that, you, can't, you, you can't deny it. You can't refute it. It's just, it's ultimately what it is, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he looked at me and I was like, wow. You know, but that's how I feel even to this day. It's like to deal with the social issues, to deal with any issue within the church. Like, you, you got to turn to the very wisdom of God to rationalize what we're actually talking about. Not your emotions and not your feelings. Because when it comes to rational thought, it's not a matter of what you've lived through. It's a matter of how you deal with right. what you've lived through. Yeah. And how do you grow from that? Yeah. And how do you move forward? Yeah. I, I just feel like with everything happening with the police officers, that in the protests, that there are a lot of feelings from past histories that are, that are there that are still kind of at the forefront of people's minds. Yeah. And it's keeping them from rationalizing the other side of the story. Because one side of the story is, yeah, America has a very ugly history. Mm -hmm. But the other side of the story is that in a matter of 400 years, we've gone from being in chains to a black president. Right. Like, that's a lot of progress. No matter how things are now, the fact of the matter is, is they're not like they were 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you're, you're what? You wanted to speed up that process? You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's happening. It may not be happening as fast as you think it should, but it is happening nonetheless. So it's like, if you want to have a conversation about systematic racism, then have a conversation. Yeah. It's like yelling at people, demanding that people change, is not having a conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the ter terrible thing about social media. It's like a, it's almost like a one-sided conversation. Yeah. Um, you remember, it was about, it was about three years ago when a whole bunch of people started getting woke. <laughs> woke on Facebook, Black History Book. They posted all sorts of history. I didn't know that. I didn't know this. I yeah. didn't know that. But uh, they were just posting the stuff and getting angry about it. Yeah. But they weren't doing anything about it. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't seeking any type of rational solution for it. They're just getting mad. <laughs> so wow. It's like it's like when, when we were we were actually talking about a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Like, Going down and uh, and it's as usual. <laughs> what do we bring it back to? Back to the scripture. <laughs> back to the scripture. Yeah. Because it's like why why did all those people all of a sudden decide to research Black History during that Black History? Every other year it was just okay Black History Month Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. <laughs> Martin Luther King. Yeah. We have a dream. We have a dream. Nobody looked at the dirty side of everything. Right. right. And, and now all of a sudden everybody sees the dirty side. And it filled it, it filled that void. I guess I guess with a black president, <laughs> we didn't have that void of uh, of uh, oh, oh, I guess a, a white master over the country. Yeah. So, so so we had to we had to find some other way to be angry. <laughs> but it's funny how human nature does that. Yes. It's like if you see one problem solved, then they move on. He said that today. And we have a tendency to move on to the next, mm -hmm. and then we fix that as another one. And then you fix that, it's not, that will always be the case as long as we exist. Yeah, when you said that, I thought about that, man. I was like, dude. You talk about what? About, uh, you know, how one problem is solved, we find another. Solve that problem, we find another. Like, how, where, where does it stop? Because we don't, I think, I think the, mo the reason why we run from problem, 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 problem is because we want to always have a problem. We're used to having problems. This is yeah. We're used to having problems, so as long as I got a problem, I feel like I'm alive. Like I'm, I can hang on to me. I can hang on to my anger instead of uh -huh. saying, you know what I mean? Because problems seem to, you know, allow us to, to hang on to that anger. Yeah, and, the emotions. And, yeah, the emotions. Instead of just going, you know what? What did I learn from that? Uh, why did I go through that? Um, and then and then take that and says, okay, you know what? I'm gonna learn from that. I'm gonna grow from that. That was a good thing. It, it seemed like it was a bad thing, but it wasn't. It was a, it was a good thing. And, I, and I'm glad that happened now, you know, so it don't happen five years from now. Or if it happens five years from now, I know oh, how to have it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And so and that's what I look at. I try to look at problems or whatever or issues that I have. I look at it as opportunities, to not work. problems yet. I, so I go, oh, ooh, that happened. Okay. Well, what can I learn from that? Yeah. It's an opportunity. I got I, I, I to gotta think positive. Everything you learn, and, and, and 
you seem to learn better or learn more from problems than you do from when everything's okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. Yeah. Because because that because those problems kind of it's like they define you. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you will you will have them. Yeah. I mean, the scripture says in this life you will have yeah. many trouble. That's what I said. I said that fire. It says fire can do two things. They do yeah. two things to I remember that. either burn you up <laughs> or, yeah, or refine you. Or refine you. I yeah. you saying that's that. what yeah. it does, and that's why I look at problems. Is you know I'm gonna let it refine you. Yeah. And, and, and so when you let it refine you, then you don't have that anger. Yeah. But when it burns you, you anger. Right, because it, it, it hurts you. Yeah, it hurts you. It, I'm, I'm, I'm ticked off. Okay, okay. Because I do believe that when you don't fully walk through what you need to walk through, it can change your viewpoint of how you see other things. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm like, okay, okay. I know these two guys that I wasn't making, but yeah, I was making comparisons. So I'm like, okay, I know he's friends with this guy, but why is Kenneth's? Why is what he's saying different? than what I'm hearing coming from from this guy. They both led churches. But why is his answer different than his? And and me seeing your walk, I know it's like you, you always brought me back to the scripture. And I have to admit the whole time I was listening to the video, I started giving a few examples. I didn't hear going back, I didn't hear any scripture being poured out to create or to cause a change of thinking. I didn't hear. What I heard was like an educated man. Yes, yes. That, that's what I heard. Um, and and what they said at the end that he had that he went to college for uh, archaeological studies. Okay. See, I, 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 yeah, I didn't hear that part. But it, what was coming across was uh, for me was coming was like an educated guy. Right. Like, hey, I can tell you what's going on here. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It didn't take me back to the Bible to God's word. What are we talking about? Uh, I was talking about the video that he saw. Uh, it was talking about systematic uh, racism. racism. Okay. And they were talking about how... Even in the church. Yeah, how some of it is, like the mindset is kind of in yeah. the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, example, yeah. like Kenneth had went through one of the experiences that they mentioned mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, he was uh, looking at going to a church and he was like, well, hey, you know, no, we don't want to go to this church because, you know, it's like majority white. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> let me, let, let, let me kind of... I was already at the church. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was already on staff at the church. And the leadership said, um, you should be leading this church. You're more like a leader. Right. And we're like elders. Oh, I see. See, and then you could lead because of your power, your youth, and your son. But it wouldn't go good because you're a black leader. Mm. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so that, so that oh, was said to me. So I, and I was like, okay. You know, like, okay. You know, I'm fine with that, blah, 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 you know. But I was like, yeah, because I'm more of a, I'm not, I'm, you know how I am. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. on the edge. But, but that was it. Now, mind you, the couple was up above me leading the church, mm -hmm. and they said that, right? But needless to say, we came to Memphis, and now there's a black couple leading the church. The, ch the very church that you church. Church. Mm -hmm. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Yep. And the guy is sort of like me now. He's got more education, but he leads like on, on the edge like I do. Mm -hmm. So and so now so, it's like when I listen to that, hear it come from you now, lie. it's like apparently that's how a guy wanted you. Exactly. That's how I see it now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I could very easily be like, oh, that was racism. Like exactly. Right, right. And, and I could do the same thing. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so for me, when he said that in the video, I didn't even think of it like that. I didn't mm -hmm. think of it as racism. I just said, oh, that, you know, like, yeah. And then, and then but when, when, when Frank was talking in his video, now it's like, oh, I went back and I said, but really, that all happened. I needed to be here because I learned some things about my own character being here. See, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's and I, and I go, so, you know, so was that them? And God used the the racism, the system, you know, systematic racism mm -hmm. to train Kenneth. Right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so now Kenneth, because of that, he is, I feel like he, he can be a better leader if he ever leads again than what I would have been yes. if I would have been if I stayed there right. and led. Because I experienced it. Oh my goodness. So it's like God will so, allow for you to learn from the suffering. Just like Paul said. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. Isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah, you bring it back to the Bible. Yeah. You got to suffer. You got to suffer. You got to suffer. There's no way to grow without it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so you have to change your mindset to, to want the suffering. Mm -hmm. That's what he meant by that. Yep. You have to change your mindset to welcome the suffering. Yeah, because it's not suffering. It's training. <laughs> it's training. Yeah. It's training. It's oh, training. My. <laughs> to be more like That's Christ. Right. Oh, my goodness. To be more like Christ. To be more like Christ. Christ. Maybe like... seals go through what? Suffering or training? <laughs> it's I, training. I just but they look like they suffer, man. I just gave uh, somebody that we studied the Bible with the example of when I first was baptized, learning to follow Christ and learning and having the motivation to read my Bible was like training and track. I was yeah. willing to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, yeah. go run a mile, do stadiums, and lift weights. And I welcomed it. Yeah. I got up. I was happy to do it. Yeah. But it's the same way when, you, when, you, when you're uh, following Christ. You got to be willing to get up, take that time with God, take the lessons that go along with it. You know, this thing is where God's living active, sharper than any double set. Yeah. Sword. Yeah. It hurts when you read this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I was reading the other day, and I was telling about it. I was like, man, I read something, and it just, it just exposed me. <laughs> <laughs> it exposed yeah. me. <laughs> and I was reading, I was reading one of the apocryphal uh, books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was reading Tobit. And in, in the uh, scripture, it was talking about how, how Tobit was willing to, you know, give to others and how he's willing to do anything for others and be so so gracious to others and, and bless others and, and make sure others were honored. But then when he was in a hard spot, he got in a hard spot, he, he was struck with blindness. And he couldn't provide for himself or his family. And his wife started working and she went out and she was weaving and when she paid somebody, how when she that? when she gave uh when she gave them their their uh, cloth, they gave her her payment plus a goat. Mm. And you know back then a goat was like like mm. like, yeah, that's like that's like we good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she came home with the goat and Toby was like, "You stole that goat. You stole that goat." And she was like, "No, I was given this goat. It was payment for what I, the work that I did." He was like, "No, you stole the goat." And she called him out. She's like, "Oh, I see how you are." I see the kind of man you are. You're willing to give, but you're not willing to accept yes. oh, in your time of need. Wow. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so willing to help you, but I don't want no help from nobody. Mm, I was wow. like, ah. Mm. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another one. 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 